I was out of my element this week. I didn't get to film around the casinos like I normally do at the drop in the HSI. You know, I got shuttled right in and shuttled right to my seat every time and just focused on playing. I didn't focus on taking a bunch of videos. So my cutscenes in between all the hands of show over the three California vlogs is going to be my family vacation added in. Sort of a memory for us too. The Commerce, I really like that place. I know a lot of people uh, seem to talk negatively about it, you know, because of the rake and the nitty players or, or whatnot, whatever I've seen on posts. But when I played, it was a lot of action. On the way in, the guy let me know there were no slots. It was only table games and poker. And I was like, that's a dream come true. They were accommodating 60 tables easily when I was there. The night before was 105 tables, but I didn't make it that night. All right, my YouTube rail. As you can tell, so far at my first ever 5-5 game, I'm doing pretty well. Of course, I'm playing pretty snug. I've only taken down a couple of big pots with raises and c-bets with some pretty premium hands. Still trying to get comfortable with what everybody's raising or what everybody might be calling with, and I have a lot to learn from 5-5. We'll see if these three sessions in California help the upcoming vloggers game, link below, which I believe is 5-5, five, five, 1,000 max. In this hand, I get ace-jack of clubs in the small blind. I love to show you guys the hands that impact each session or that I bring up questions. You know, I don't always play the greatest and I don't always play the worst, but I show you anything that makes a difference. So in this hand, I get ace-jack of clubs in the small blind, middle position limped, the cutoff limped, and the button raised to $25. I call with $25. I don't think it's a fold and it's possibly a raise is what I should have done. The big blind folded, middle position and the cutoff both call the $25 raise. The flop comes king jack four with one club and two spades. Since I wasn't the aggressor, I checked, middle position checked and the cutoff checked. The button bet $65 and I folded. It kind of makes me sick to see this hand, but in all honesty, I felt like I was already beat with the king out there, either by the button or two guys after me, so I let it go. What do you guys think? Is this a hand you stick around on, you know? There's the backdoor flush draw, you have middle pair. I feel like that was really tight. I should have stuck around. You're probably all gonna rail me in the rail comments below, but I appreciate all the feedback. And everyone else did fold, and the button took it down, so we didn't see what he had. Alright, we're back on the common downhill slide that I like to show. In this hand I pick up one of my first sets of pocket jacks from this session. Middle position limped, the hijack limped, 
and I raised to $25. I think that raise could have been bigger with two limpers. The small blind folded, the big blind folded, and middle position called, and the hijack folded. We see an ace nine deuce rainbow flop. Middle position checked, and I bet $55, which was close to a pot size bet. Maybe a little big, but I wanted to do more than half pot. He called $55. The turns, the 10 of clubs, middle position checked, and I checked back, all of a sudden showing fear of that ace. And the river's pretty good one, jack of clubs. Middle position again checked, and I bet out a very small bet of $75 to see if he'd raise over the top of me, but he folded. We took this one down. Now we're looking at pocket nines in middle position. It folded around to me. I raised to $20. The button called $20. The small blind called. The big blind called. We see a 663 rainbow flop. The small blind checked. The big blind checked. And I bet out $60. The button called $60. The small blind folded and the big blind folded. We see a 10 of diamonds turn. And instead of playing chicken of the 10, I do continue. Bet $100 half bought and the button folded. Quick, easy hand to take down. Okay, here's my second pocket jack's hand in this session, and it has a similar feel to the earlier ace jack hand. I don't know if it was the new venue, the new stakes, or what, but I really think I'm playing this wrong. Let me know below what you guys would do in these situations. I'm in the small blind with pocket jacks, middle position raised to $25, folded around and I called $25, the big blind called $25, and we see a king XX flop. That's all I wrote in my notes. I checked, the big blind checked, middle position bet, I'm not sure the amount, but I folded. It was another case of the king out there and he probably had a king. As you guys can tell, I play a lot on feel. I know that is not the best way to play, the most profitable way to play. With the king out there, it's hard for him to have a king. There's two more cards coming. I know there wasn't any equity, like any backdoor straight draws or flush draws out there for me, but should I continue here and what size of bet should I continue to? You know, I'm not sure what he bet. Like I said, the pot was already $75. If he bets three quarter, do I continue? If he bets a pot size bet, maybe I fold there. I'm not sure. These hands are the instances where I know I seriously need some cash game coaching. Okay, a few hands later, we get ace queen in the cutoff. Plus two limped. The hijack limped. I raised to $20. Once again, I think that should have been bigger. But that's okay because everyone here totally knows that I'm only playing tight, big, premium hands. They respect my raises. Oh, wait. Never mind. The button called. Small blind did fold. The big blind called. Plus two called. And the hijack called. Nobody respects my raises. The flop is queen nine seven, two spades. It checked around to me and I bet $75. Little stab at it. The button called $75. The big blind folded and plus two called $75, then the hijack went all in for $300. You know, maybe I have the ace of spades, I'd continue here, but this guy's saying, hey, I have a set, or I have two pair, or a draw that I don't think is worth me putting in the extra 225. Let me know below, because I did fold. The button ended up calling for 225, plus two let it go, 
and the ran out went ten of diamonds, four of hearts, and they show queen jack of spades for top pair big flush draw, and ten eight for open ended straight draw. Plus two said that he folded king queen, which would have won, to their knowledge. But little did anyone know, I folded the winner, ace queen. I did not give them that information. I just sat there and steamed for a little bit. And the next few hands is me letting off steam. Should I have continued there? Ace 10 in middle position. I limp, super. The cutoff limped and the blinds check. We see a king jack seven, three club flop. It checked around. I decided not to bet, should have bet with the ace clubs, but I'd take the free card at this point and see what anybody wants to do. It ended up being a three of diamonds. The blinds checked again. And this time I took a big stab at it with my potential one card nut flush draw coming out. I bet $60. My cutoff called $60 and the blinds folded. The river's the ten of spades. Now I have some showdown value if he was on a flush draw and miss, but that's not good enough for me. I bet $85, a little over half the pot, to which he called $85 because he had jack three for two pair. How bad did I play that one? Once again, we're getting back down to starting stack. I have queen jack of diamonds in the hijack. Under the gun limps, middle position limps, and I raise to the spectacular $20. The button calls, that guy called every hand I was in. The small blind called, the big blind called, they respect my raises, the under the gun called, and of course, middle position calls. The flop is jack five four, a rainbow. Small blind checked, big blind checked, under the gun checked, middle position checked. I bet out with my top pair, $60. The button called $60. Small blind folded, and the big blind raised to 175. Under the gun folded, middle position folded. Now at this point, hands that I haven't shown, because you know they only go to the flop and have no real value to the session, I had a couple where I raised and then didn't hit, and I would see bet and get raised and people would see me fold. I think that's playing a lot into this guy's raise, so I don't hold any value in his hand. Maybe he has a draw with those 5-4. If he had ace-jack, king-jack, queen-jack, anything like that, this player would have raised. So I call 115 more, and the button folded. The turn's a 9 of diamonds, which he checks. I'm not going to let him get there if he's on a draw, so I take a really small stab at it and bet $100 to see if he's going to come over top me, and then I'll fold. But he calls $100. The river's the 6 of hearts. So now if he has some sort of gut shot straight draw, he just hit. If he had 7, 8, 2, 3, he checked. Thinking I'm going to bet again is what I assume. But I do bet again. I bet $200. Another small stab at it. You know, trying to induce an over the top so I know I can let it go. Probably not the best way to play. But he folded and I took down a pretty decent pot. While I don't have an official sponsor yet for my vlog, Golden Tea TV has shown some interest, so I'm going to show them some love. I believe in the game, I love the game of Golden Tea, and they go out of their way to really promote it, and they put on events, which I'll link below. There's one in Indy coming up early August, one in Cincinnati late August, and as you guys saw in a previous vlog, I went to St. Louis 
We went the night before a poker game and just had a great time watching these guys play Golden Tee. All of their links below. Please show them some love if you'd like. And if you do stop by, tell them Hello7027 sent you. That'll be awesome. Maybe one day we can work on some giveaways or something. So this is the GTTV hand of the session. Another time with Pocket Jacks in the big blind. Middle position raised to $20. The cutoff called $20. The button called $20. Small blind folded. And I called $20. Could have, should have been a raise. I don't know. Let me know. We see a 874, two spade flop. I check. I'm going to call the raiser's aggression. The middle position checked. So the raiser is showing no aggression. The cutoff checked. And the button bet $60. Okay, so maybe he has a piece of this hand. Maybe he's on a draw. I'll call $60 which is weird against the other jack hands and the ace jack hand. You know, if there was an overcard, maybe I wouldn't call that bet. Middle position folded and the cutoff folded. The turn is the king of clubs. I decide to rep the king, bet out $100, try to induce a fold or a shove over the top. That way I know I'm not good. But he just called $100. The river's the ace of clubs. Another scary card. So scary, in fact, that I checked. And he went all in in a weird way. I can't even explain it. The way he put his three stacks of 100 out there but I didn't like it and I thought about folding but then I pulled my cards back because as soon as he put his chips in he went to his phone I didn't see this guy on his phone a whole lot it was really weird I know tells they can bite you in the ass and unless you have a really good tail they really aren't worth a whole lot but watching this guy he was like he was scrolling through something maybe Instagram I don't know what he was looking at but his thumb was going 100 miles an hour, and it wasn't fluid. This is really stupid, <laughs> but it wasn't fluid. It was like his thumb was getting locked up as he was moving. It was, he was trying to show finesse, but he was stumbling. It was kind of like me dancing or something. Just watching him, and he wouldn't look up, it really made me believe that he totally bricked this hand. So even though it would dwindle my stack down again, I think my jacks are good, so I call $300. And he mucks. He mucked his hand. I show my jacks. And the crowd goes wild. It's just one of those rare hands where you just know it. And you can be wrong sometimes. Sometimes you can be right. And have these beautiful chips sitting in front of you. this point it's getting really late in the night starting to bleed off a little bit you know I've already went down to a $1,300 stack size lost about a hundred I get ace king in the big blind middle position raised to $15 the button called $15 the small blind folded and I just called $10 more easy raise spot but I'm in it to play terrible from the get-go by not raising here 983 rainbow flop I checked middle position bet $50 the button folded I look him up I'm thinking with his small raise size, he just has like a weak ace hand, like ace queen, ace jack, ace ten. So I call. The turns the six of hearts. I check again. And this time he checks. And the river's the four of diamonds. I check once more to show down my ace high. But he bet $70. Half pot. Small enough for me to want to make another hero call and show my ace high. So I call. And he does show a weak ace hand. Ace nine. Four top pair. Taking it down. It was at that point I decided it was time to go home. So we're racking up a $656 profit after four hours of play, which equals our fourth winning session in a row. Thank you guys so much. I couldn't have done it without you. Without your support and your help along the way, I do feel I'm improving even though this shows a lot of stumbling. Keep your comments below. I do read and reply to them all. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. A couple more California vlogs coming. Give this video a big thumbs up and watch to the end here. We've got a good little skit going. Thank you. And guys, don't forget about the Vloggers game next Wednesday, July 26th at 7 p.m. Pacific. Streamed on Stones Live Twitch and then it'll be played back on their YouTube channel. A lot of the top vloggers will be there. It'll be commentated by Bart Hansen. I know I mentioned the Vloggers game in the last few vlogs. We're about past it, but I do mention it every single day at home. My wife is probably getting tired of it. She said if I mention it again, that I'm going to have to find a place to sleep until it. Babe! <laughs>
So today in my poker session, who is at my door, man? Somebody's at my door, let's go check it out. All right, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, jeez. Dale, 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 dude. Raise my man, my buddy. What are you doing here, man? Good to see you. Great to see you. This is a pleasant surprise. Who's with you out there? Oh, oh. that's just my flying buddy. I didn't even know you knew where I lived. I know we're friends and everything. We go to Vegas and do all these little poker trips, but you never been to my house. How do you, how did you get my address? You know, I checked your drone footage and I calculated your odometer in your truck from when you were in your garage in that one video. This is weird. This is getting weird, man. To later videos when you were at the poker room. This is getting weird. Triangulated some distances and some math. Dude. Took some guesses. This is the third place I've been to today. I'm confused, man. I'm just, I'm confused. My wife told me to look for a place to stay for the vloggers game and... The poker vloggers game? It's like, it's like too far away. Come on in. Let's get a drink. Let's talk this over.